Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Alexandria Paris and I'm a holistic interior designer. I teach others about holistic design, feng shui, and slow, sustainable living. If that's of interest, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Today I'm answering the question, what is a holistic home? The act of being holistic is basically when all the different parts of something are working together in harmony. For example, holistic health requires a balance between physical activity, good nutrition, rest and hydration. Holistic learning may be a balance between written assignments, verbal presentations, and group projects. Viewing any situation through a holistic lens allows us to identify all the individual parts and how we can promote them to work together as one. When we apply this way of thinking to interiors, it translates into a few different components. For example, cleanliness and clutter, organization, style and decor, and general atmosphere. This spring, I'm launching my full five-step guide to creating a holistic home. So if that's something you're looking to achieve in your home, I've included the enrollment link in the description of this video. Now, if you're completely new to the entire concept of holistic interior design, these would be some tips to get started. Cleanliness. I feel like keeping a clean home is something we all understand pretty well at this point. But when we consider it in relation to our general well-being, it runs a little bit deeper. In a holistic home, we make decisions on how something is truly going to impact us. So maybe that's actually taking time to dust and wash the baseboard or squeegee the inside and outside of your window so you can enjoy the view. My personal favorite is making sure I have clean sheets every single week. It's not so much that I set out to make these chores for myself, but it's it's more of a conscious lifestyle shift knowing I deserve to live in a healthy, clean, and luxurious environment. Organization. Personally, I have lived in spaces as small as 400 square feet, so I definitely know the struggle when it comes to organization. When we actually create systems and procedures to eliminate clutter, we can help to reduce stress and chaos from these visual eyesores. Our homes and lifestyle can actually start to work in harmony when items are easily accessible and orderly. Wellness habits. For some people, this may be an aha moment, but basically a question I like to ask my holistic home clients is, does your current environment support healthy lifestyle habits? And for a lot of us, the answer is no. For example, if you're looking to eat healthier, but your kitchen is always a mess and there's no room in your fridge for any nutritious foods, and maybe even your pots and pans and other appliances just don't inspire you to cook, then you can bet that your home is not assisting you in your goals. But when you create spaces for healthy healthy habits, maybe invest in a beautiful blender or some new cookware, your surroundings can start to inspire you to make better lifestyle choices. Intention setting. Very similar to my previous point, when you set new intentions and goals, like maybe you're trying a new spiritual path and you want to spend more time being mindful and meditating, it's worth taking note how you can create space for this in your home. For example, maybe a meditation corner or a spiritual bookshelf. It's the simple act of creating spaces that are in line with your intentions so you can more successfully achieve your goals. Feng Shui. I would say this is something that's pretty unique to my approach. I place a lot of consideration into the spiritual realm. I think it's important to work with the energies within your home and how you can welcome more positivity. And the principles of feng shui are very similar to the pillars of holistic design when it comes to things like cleanliness, organization, and clutter. But I do love taking it one step further. For example, in feng shui, we want to avoid things like branches and dried plants as they can represent death. Instead, we want to focus on fresh green plants, fresh flowers, or even displaying a fruit bowl on your countertop to bring the energies of abundance. Adding your personality. Obviously, good design and style do play a role in making a space feel good. But as human beings, we are also better supported when our environment reflects who we are. This means decorating with your favorite colors, displaying current photos of yourself and your loved ones. Even if you're single without many friends or loved ones, you can still display current photos of yourself in places that you love, doing activities that bring you joy. Lighting. My biggest pet peeve is lighting. How can you feel relaxed and at peace when you have bright LED lights shining down on you? By softening the lighting in your home, by using lamps, candle lights, or even a warmer bulb, you can lessen your exposure to the space and release any stress and tension caused by bad lighting. I always recommend making this part of your daily routine. For example, at 7 p.m. every day, my lights turn down and my lamps turn on. This helps me relax and unwind hours before I go to bed. Obviously, 
obviously my previous points about lighting also contribute to creating an atmosphere, but there's a few other ways we can create a calming mood within your space. Scents, for example, are a great way to influence your home. From calming to fresh and lively to even romantic, a scent can really enhance the mood in your space. Music is another great way to set the tone in your home. I work from home throughout the day and usually I start off the morning with some soft meditation music, usually something a little bit more lively for the afternoon, and then back to a calming playlist in the evening. It sounds like a really small step, but it actually can completely change the atmosphere in your home. Crystals. Again, this is unique to my process, I would say. It's something that's of interest to me and that I've included in my holistic home routine. And I do find I get a lot of clients that ask me to incorporate this in their homes as well. Through feng shui, we can break down your home into a few different sectors. For example, your kitchen represents health, your office is success and wealth, and your bedroom is love and relationships. Using different crystals, we can enhance each energy within these spaces. Moon phases. Along with feng shui and crystal work, I base a lot of my holistic home rituals around the lunar cycle. I love the idea of working in harmony with mother nature. Full moons, for example, represent ending, cleansing, and death. So this is a great time for a big clean and purge. New moons are considered times of rebirth and intention setting. So I love to update my vision board around this moon phase. Those are my top 10 tips to consider when creating your holistic home. I sincerely hope you find this video helpful and that you feel inspired to create your own holistic home. Don't forget, if you want to learn more on this subject, I am releasing a step-by-step in-depth holistic home course. Be sure to enroll using the link in the description of this video. As always, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and drop a comment if you have any questions or topics you want me to cover in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.